Hello and welcome to another episode of Crizzy Books. I'm Crizzy, or Chris. But only my homeboys call me Chris. And today I'm going to be doing a review of The Crimson Cage. So let's get into it. The Crimson Cage was published in 2022. That's about 144 pages long. Nothing crazy. It was written, illustrated, whatever else goes into making a comic book by John Lees, Alex Cormick, and Ashley Cormick. Being a longtime wrestling fan, I'll read pretty much anything that has to do with wrestling, uh, watch any movie that has to do with wrestling. I love this shit. This story in particular is based off of Shakespeare's Macbeth, which I've never read. I'm not a Shakespeare person. I've never read Shakespeare except for Romeo and Juliet in high school, and there were boobs in the movie. So that's pretty cool. But other than that, fuck Shakespeare. I don't give a fuck. Fuck Shakespeare. So kind of going into this, not really knowing what this story entails or what it's going to be about. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, everything from the story to the characters to the art, all of it spot on, nailed it. It's great. This story follows the main character, Chuck, Chuck Frenzy, um, his girlfriend, Charlene, a couple of other guys that he wrestles with. Chuck wants to be a main event guy. He wants to be the world champion. This takes place back in the 80s, 1984 in Louisiana during the territory days. If you're not a mark like me, wrestling didn't used to just be WWE and then a couple other smaller companies it used to be divided up into territories all throughout the United States. People would travel around. You might be on TV. You might just be performing live. And that's just kind of how it worked. Each territory was run by their own, you know, people. Uh, and there was usually about one champion. If you've seen the Iron Claw that just came out recently, it explains more of it. I thought this was a really cool time to focus on. There's a lot of history from that era uh, that a lot of people don't know. If you watch Dark Side of the Ring, a lot of the stories on there are about territory days. But yeah, this was fantastic. Highly recommend it. Whether you're a wrestling fan or not, I thought that this was awesome. Let's get into the plot. So this follows main character Chuck Chuck Frenzy, as he's known in the ring, and his girlfriend, ring girl Charlene. We first meet them in a match. He is having a match with one of his friends, who's known as Grud. Him and Grud go out to a bar, get pretty hammered, and wander into the swamp, where they meet three fat, ugly swamp hags that are sisters. They reveal to both of them their futures. This is your fate. Here's what's going to happen. Chuck Frenzy, you're only going to be champion once you'll only hold the title one time you'll never hold it again after that grud you'll never be champion but your sons are going to be champions your legacy is going to be huge you're going to build a dynasty off of your family and then they present this kind of demon looking knife to chuck and he grabs the knife. Chuck is set to face the world champion named Van Emerald. Throughout this whole book, there's a lot of like references to older people and characters and things like that. Von Emerald specifically seems to be more of a take on Ric Flair. He's got the big blonde hair. He wears the frilly long robes. The night before they're supposed to have their match, Van Emerald is telling Chuck, like, hey, kid, I want to, like, put you over. Putting over means I want to make you look good in this match. Even though you're going to lose, I'm going to make you look strong and, like, you could be a contender for my title. He then tells him that he thinks that Chuck has what it takes. He's got a rare ability. If he just follows Emerald, Emerald will put him over and he'll be the next champion. This is all happening after they've been out at the bar for a long time. They're sitting on a bridge. Chuck is thinking of pushing Emerald off of the bridge to kill him. He knows that like in order for him to be champion, he thinks that he has to kill the current champion for that to happen. But he doesn't end up doing it. He takes what Emerald says to heart and is like, okay, great. They have their match. Emerald was lying the whole time, pins him dirty, makes him look bad, and then just kind of laughs it off. Chuck's super pissed. Charlene is super pissed, so they show up to Emerald's hotel and stab him with the demon swamp hag knife. This ends up vacating the title that Chuck then wins um, and becomes champion. From that point on, it seems like there's this kind of bloodlust growing within Charlene and Chuck. Like, they think that they need to now kill Terry or Grud. They think they need to do that to break their fate or somehow like change this prophecy of the future that they've seen. Uh, at one point, Chuck's in the back and he sees this demon looking luchador. He knows that he has something to do with these, these swamp hags. So he asks him, hey, can you help me out? Essentially setting up these guys are going to kill 
Terry, which eventually happens. Uh, Terry and his son are on their way to another match. The Lucha shows up in the middle of the road. Terry tells his son to leave, go hide, and walks up to the Lucha. He's like, I think I know what this is about. Lucha ends up killing him, smashes his head into his car door, uh, but doesn't kill his son. He then goes to Chuck and shows him Terry's severed head. At this point, Chuck starts having like somewhat of a mental breakdown he starts seeing a lot of things seeing people that aren't there he sees terry in the crowd and in the ring and everybody's like what the fuck is going on with you man like are you okay we then find out that chuck's championship run is about to come to an end which is a lot sooner than he was expecting and uh they're also going to turn him heel they they just don't believe that he has the draw or the star power or that kind of it factor to hold the title long term they thought he was a good choice as an interim champion but now they're going to move it over and they're going to give it to another guy named emmett emmett crow I think he's probably based off of Cowboy Bob Orton, father of WWE superstar Randy Orton. Randy the Viper. Randy the Viper Orton. We then see Chuck sneak into Emmett's house, thinking that Emmett is there. Emmett's not there. It's his wife and his kid, and Chuck kills both of them instead. Their match is going to take place. Emmett is fighting for his family, not knowing that Chuck killed them. And they say that the match is going to be inside of a cage, the Crimson Cage. It's basically a hell in a cell, if you know what that is. It's a steel cage with a top on it, um, so you can't get out. This whole time, Charlene's trying really hard to become a legitimate female wrestler. She's trying to do new things or try different things in the ring to get the audience on her side, which she is being successful at. But in her match... During this big event before Chuck and Emmett's match, she gets a little too carried away, tries a move that she doesn't land right, lands on her neck. She dies from it. Charlene ends up dying. Uh, also, a little bit before this, he gets in a limo and the hags are in there and he makes a deal with them, like my soul to be the champion eternal. They tell him, you'll be champion as long as, long as the top of the cage is still there. Um, he'll be champion. So him and Emmett have their match and it's a total bloodbath. He ends up cutting off Emmett's ear with a razor blade and punching him and doing all kinds of stuff and just pushing him and telling him like, this is my destiny. This is my fate. You're not going to take this from me. As long as there's a roof on the cage, I'm going to be champion. And they eventually end up breaking one of the sides of the cage. Cage falls down and Chuck loses the match. This match was a banger. Everybody's talking about how great it was. Emmett confronts Chuck in the parking lot and says, hey, like, what the fuck was all of that about? And he's like, hey, man, chill out. It's okay. We we both look like stars out there. It's all good. And he's like, no, I know that you killed my family. Then a couple of other people from earlier who were involved with the other people that he killed, Terry's son, two other wrestlers that were involved with Emerald, all show up and they stab Chuck to death in the parking lot. And that's where the book ends. This was awesome. Not knowing Macbeth, uh, I mean, I think I probably understand the story now. The pacing, the direction, the art specifically, I really love. There's a real grittiness to it all. It's very like popping and grotesque when it needs to be. This was uh, this was also published by AWA Upshot. I don't think I've read anything else that they've published, so I might have to dive in because if it's anything like this, I'm in. I'm going to give the Crimson Cage five out of five suckets. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. But what did you think? Have you read this? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.